Okay, today let's talk about merging databases. This is something that I get asked about a lot, and I think I'm getting it asked a lot now, later in the year, because people want to simplify their Notion workspace for the new year. They want to clean it up. They have all these frivolous databases that they just want in one place. And they're realizing that relations and rollups, it's nice, but it's just not what they're looking for. It's not simplifying their workspace enough. It's just too much friction. And I totally, totally understand that and can totally relate. So in this video, I want to show you how to literally merge and bring several databases together into one master. And what I think is particularly important with this master database is that we're including dates. So date properties, so that we can have that master database show a calendar of all dates across the workspace. So let's look at this page and see what we're working with. So I went through the default templates that Notion provides. They have this like course schedule database. They have another one called a simple notebook, expenses for very simple budgeting, uh, a task list and journal database. So I'd say these are your basic databases that anyone is using. And what all these databases have in common is a date. So these are probably in the realm of productivity and databases you'd probably want to collect in one place more or less. And up here at the top, this is gonna be the master database to merge everything into. So in this example, I'm not merging everything into a database that already exists and already has properties, but pretty much it's the same functionality as what I'm going to show you. It's just a lot easier visually to show you with an empty database. So let's just call this master database. Now, let me show you what happens when I literally just drag rows into this master. Every property appears from course schedule and all of it is pre-filled, which is nice. But let's merge another database in here. Another way to merge databases or select rows or pages is to also highlight and select these six blocks or these six dots and go to move to. There's a shortcut for this as well. And I'll just find master database. And it'll do the same thing. I now have all of the properties from Simple Notebook also included in this master database. So as you are consolidating more and more databases with a lot of properties, this is going to get so way out of hand and just kind of create a mess. We don't want a mess. So let's avoid doing that. Instead, what I want to do, especially with these dates, I don't want multiple date properties populating in this master because we want one calendar view. To make this merge more smooth, I'm gonna make sure that every date property in all of these databases are just called date. And I'm gonna actually add a date property up here that's also called date and make it a date property. I'm also going to go ahead and create a type property that is spelled in the same way as type in course schedule, but I'm going to keep it a text property. Now I'm going to name this one topic. I also want to go down to course schedule and make sure all of my selects and multi selects are text. Now when I go to merge, everything will populate in the appropriate properties. And then what I can do from here really is just change this text property to a select and this topic to a multi-select. The only thing that's a bit annoying is you're gonna have to go in and customize those colors again. That isn't too much of a headache. Let's keep all of those text properties as we consolidate each database so it doesn't really get confused. But first, I want to create a select property in this master database that's called course schedule. So let's just name this 
data base and give it select properties so we know what we're working with. All these pages are coming from the course schedule. What I can also do is go into filter, which is over here, and make sure every single addition to this database view going forward will automatically populate with course schedule. So we don't have to fill that in anymore. So database is course schedule. Now I'm gonna create a new view and call it simple notebook. And this is our next database that we're going to merge. Before we do anything, let's actually create another tag in here called simple a notebook. And then create a filter just like before, except we're gonna do this before merging. Go to database is simple notebook in this view. I can go back up to course schedule and make sure this one says course schedule so I don't get confused. Now in here, if we look at the properties in simple notebook, we have a date property, but it's called created. And it's actually not um, a created time property. It is actually a date property. So let's change this to date spelled in the same way as our master. Created by, we're gonna change this to text. Tags also to text for now. And then in the master, just line everything up. So we have one for date, so we can keep that property there. I don't think we have one for type, so I can hide that. There's no properties for topic. Let's make another view for created by. I believe that's how it's spelled. The lowercase b and tags. And all of that is in text. Now, when I go merge it in, everything will populate properly. And we're getting that date populating in the same date property as everything inside of course schedule. Let's hide these because these are not for this database view. So when I go to create a calendar view, everything will populate from each database view. So we'll have one calendar to see everything that includes a date. So if I go to properties and view database, I can see that not only do I see all dates from course schedule, but I also see it from simple notebook. Now let's merge expenses. So let's add another view. Actually, I could just duplicate this one to make it easier. Change the name to expenses. And again, just change that filter to database is expenses. Okay, so here we have the amount, the category, a comment, and a date. So date is good, but we do have an amount property I wanna add. I can hide all that. Amount, make that a number, category, and comment. Both of these will be text properties. And also make sure category, again, is also text. You kind of see what's going on here. Now, if I go back to that calendar, also amount was supposed to be in dollars. So let's just change that. Now, if I wanna change category back to multi-select again, I can just quickly do that. And if we go back to calendar, we'll start to see those expenses uh, with dates start popping up as well. So let's just keep going down the list, coming down to task. There is date created. And this is a date created property. If you don't want this to show up in your calendar, but you do want that date created property in your master for tasks, um, you can do that pretty easily. But let's say in this example, this is just a date. Status is a select, so we're changing it to text. Make sure there is again, select property called tasks and change the filter to database is tasks and make sure everything matches up. Now we can start converting these properties back to what they should be. So for status, it should be a select property. And I can also change tasks to board view like it was before and just group by 
status. Right now you're probably thinking, these are too many properties, and if it is, if you go into a page, you'll see not only all the properties from course schedule, but you'll also see the properties from expenses and tasks and things like that. So let's start hiding these properties. I'm going to go down this list and hide all of them, and I'll show you why. I'm going to go to hide property and just say hide when empty, and we go all the way down the list. Obviously, these are not hiding because they are not empty in this case, but I'm still going to hide them. And you can access these hidden properties by just toggling down more properties and they will all show. So now that we have this figured out, let's clean up this page in particular a little bit more. So now that everything's merged, we can just delete all of these. So they are not of use. Every time we want to access any one of those databases, we're just going to go and toggle one of these views. But let's say we want these views to be shown outside of the master. We want to have our course schedule in its own little database in another page. We still want that. So you're going to do linked database. You're just going to go linked, create a linked database and search for your master database and just do some filters here. So filter to make sure the database tag is course schedule and just go in and start cleaning up these properties as you desire them to be. In fact, I would probably just go through and hide all of the properties that are empty. What we can also do is if you go in to this page, you'll see that you don't have to hide those frivolous properties anymore because we already did it originally in the master database and all of those settings um, stick with the page, even if it's a linked database. So we don't have to worry about that. We can kind of just go down the list and basically recreate what we had in the beginning of this video. Just this time, when you go to add something to your course schedule database, it is just linking to the master so everything you create in it will automatically populate in the master and automatically populate in that master schedule, which is also very nice. You can also link that master schedule somewhere as well and start creating a nice little dashboard for the new year. Now, I hope this made sense and I hate saying, I hope this made sense at the end of videos because it just feels very like I'm not confident in what I'm saying. That is a goal for me in 2021. Let's go to the outro. So merging databases. I hope this helped everyone who is doing a major clean of their workspace. Let me know if this helped you out. Let me know if you're doing a major clean. Let me know how you're gonna go about doing it. Um, this is how I'm doing it. All right, so I'll see you guys next time and all through the week on Twitter. See you then.